Patrick Athara. Patrick is from Kenya, and I think you can see him right there. Patrick, can you? Athara, and he's been cartooning uh, professionally for twenty years. Uh, has worked with most of the major newspapers in Kenya. Uh, I have published. He has published several books on political uh, cartooning in Kenya, and also regularly writes columns on international affairs in publications such as the Washington Post and Financial Times. Patrick has written five books besides the collection of his cartoons, Kenyan cartoons and censorship, taking African cartoons seriously, politics, satire and culture, Michigan State University Press, Bringing Change Through Laughter is his other book, it's Kenyan cartooning, Media and Identity in Africa. Gathara will draw for food, Patrick Gathara again in 2009. <laughs> Drawing the Line, a study of the history and impact of political cartooning in Kenya. So that was Gathara for you. Um, Gathara, you, while you are conversing, you will also uh, mention your uh, social media handles and we will show your work as well. Right now, I'm going through a round of introducing everybody. Now, next is my friend Jan Elliott. And Jan Elliott is from Oregon, where I met her in Eugene. Um, and she is the uh, creator of the internationally syndicated cartoon strip, Stone Soup. So when you don't have, I guess how I take it is, when you don't have enough food, you just make soup out of stone, right? <laughs> <laughs> which is going to be the condition of uh, the, the COVID is going, I hope the COVID doesn't lead us to that extent. Okay. Uh, it was published uh, over 300 newspapers in the US, Canada, Europe, the Middle East, Central America, and Asia. There are 11 Stone Soup book compilations. Stone Soup have been translated into Portuguese, and distributed in Portugal by Editorial Byzantium. I don't know if I pronounced that correct. So Storm Soup is the name of her comic strip, and it's been published in newspapers for 20 years, and then appeared for more than five years until 2020 in Sunday newspapers alone. Um, Jan Elliott's cartoons are part of the permanent collection at the Charles Schulz Museum in Santa Rosa, the San Francisco Museum of Cartoon Art, the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C., and the Billy Island Museum of Cartoon Art in Columbus, Ohio. Mm. Uh, Dan Elliott started cartooning when she was a young, divorced mom, trying to raise two daughters and working full-time to make ends meet and still keep her sanity. <laughs> cartooning about her life was therapeutic uh, and soon became her passion. Uh, so drawing from her own experiences, Elliot hopes to reflect real life and real people in her cartoons and to offer humor and empathy for any parent with too little time, money or patience. <laughs> Elliot spent 16 years as a freelance graphic artist and amateur cartoonist before she was able to make a living at cartooning. Elliot published two other comic strips uh, in local newspapers before Stone Soup. Uh, they were finally, until she was finally picked up for distribution by Universal Press Syndicate in 1995. So that's, uh, and, and how we met was very interesting because I was, studying in Oregon at the University of Oregon. And we happened to, uh, one interview appeared in the newspaper about me. And then the journalist decided to connect the two of us. So she actually connected the dots and we took off from there. It was so fun because uh, the university also decided to do a documentary of us. But we'll talk about that when we come back to Jan. Now we have Sabir, Sabir Nazar. And Sabir Nazar, and I happened to travel with a few more Pakistani cartoonists to Nepal. Do you remember that, uh, Sabir? 
<laughs> yeah, it I was remember the, You remember that? And you remember that it was the Himal magazine which had actually given you the award for a cartoon. It was the pick uh, by the, the by the magazines. And see, I'm Nigar Nazar and he is Sabir Nazar. So Sabir <laughs> was brought up with this question. Who is she? Is she your sister? Is she your wife? Is she your baby? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have the same name. But um, I'm sure he gave the right question, answer. <laughs> so, about Sabir Nazar, uh, but he's a Pakistani uh, painter and an editorial cartoonist for Express Tribune. He started in 1991 with the weekly Friday Times. He published his cartoons on the front page of Friday Times and he contributed to popular magazines such as Newsweek Pakistan um, and The Herald and PQ. Is that how you pronounce PQ? Yeah, it's PIC. PIC? Okay, PIC. His cartoons are now regularly published in the Express Tribune uh, affiliated to the International New York Times. Online independent in Urdu and the Friday Times, which is a weekly paper. Uh, Sabi Nazar has also drawn many cartoons, posters and publications for human rights and development NGOs, such as HRCP. Uh, Pakistan Action Aid, Oxfam and UNICEF in 2009, and um, the Editor's Pick Award from the Nepali magazine Himal, which I just mentioned, and economic, um, during his COVID-19 time, uh, lockdown, he rediscovered his passion for water painting and recently won a prize for it. Take that, you know, it was just for a <laughs> time and he gets the prize for it. That was amazing. <laughs> so when in Nepal, he went to participate in the Himal magazine event and he told me that some people, you know, like I mentioned, uh, our names were the same, so people were kind of confused. So Sabi, would you like to tell the audience which prize was it that you won for your watercolor? Actually, that's a painting award uh, from the Punjab Artists Association or Pakistan Artists Association uh, in 2020. And Nepal was actually the editor's pick award. Actually, I will, and Zahur is also a Pakistani cartoonist. We both won these uh, awards. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, the awards, you know, <clears throat> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Talks very casually about it, very humbly about it. Oh, you know, the words. <laughs> yeah, we do have another um, uh, cartoonist on our panel, uh, Mahbubi Pakdel from Iran. Um, she is a cartoonist and painter, and I've been, uh, she's been painting uh, from uh, as, since as long as she could remember. But uh, she said that I started working professionally in 2011. So uh, she got international awards from Portugal, Turkey, Romania, Oman, Germany, Croatia, and so on. And the most important award of them is the Grand Prix Award uh, uh, of the International Porto Cartoon Festival of Portugal. So that's, uh, if you can see her, uh, that is uh, Mahbube. She's having some difficulty, unfortunately, with the net. Uh, but I, uh, I think we should still be showing her work. So yeah, you can. Can you see the picture, everybody? Or you cannot see it on the screen. Yeah, you can. Yeah, we can see. Yes. Oh, really? Because I was there in Iran, and if you show the next picture, we shared our cartoons, we exchanged our books, and um, uh, Mabube likes to work uh, with color pencils. And uh, she did two solo exhibitions of hers in France and Portugal. So this is her work. Um, this is a woman with the, her whole headdress is the bridge where there's another woman with a, uh, with a baby buggy. And she's got her baby in that uh, cart, the baby's cart. And this, I think this woman below her is the one who has the baby in what Africans call the kapulana. So the kapulana is a kind of a cloth that is wrapped around and the baby is just plunked inside. Can you show the next cartoon? Okay, so this is the one about expired. So it's actually 
uh, a city that is uh, expired because it's been bombed and um, it's a kind of uh, there are just the remnants and what I can see is uh, like blood stains and a pencil yeah you can uh, I'm going to get her on voice if we succeed and Is this is Trump? the one. It looks like Trump. <laughs> yeah, exactly. there's one with Trump as well. There is. There is. And if you look at this one, are you looking at this one, the fish and the fork? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you see the fish and the fork? Because if you look at the fork, it's like the chimneys of, yes. um, it's like the chimneys, uh, the brick kilns like we have. And there is smoke coming from out there. And so this is again, it shows um, uh, like immortality of a, of an animal. This is just a fish, but it shows that these chimneys uh, are also destroying uh, the and, and pollution actually is destroying a lot of animal life. Let's see now. There's this again, chimneys used again with the waves and the pelican. Uh, which is penguin actually. The penguin is coming towards the edge of it, but it's going from the water glacier and the waterfall probably into the chimney. This one is the cartoon that got an award. It was about environment. And this one is, I wanted to discuss with her. She sent me some more cartoons of other cartoonists. This looks to me like a child marriage. Um, and I wanted to comment on it if we can get her through to her. Um, and here she is uh, giving me her book, uh, Youth Art. And these two women in the back are also cartoonists. And here she is with the garbage monster that I wrote when I was in Oregon. She's online. And... Okay, I think she's online. Uh, sorry for my waiting. I I try to another my cell phone, but uh, it is loading. I put I don't know. It is possible to put another cell phone. It's okay. We can hear you, uh, Mabube. We can hear you, um, and we're all here, and we can be hearing you. But can you tell us about the the cartoon that you won an award, the Grand Prix award for? Which one is that? Uh, which which my cartoon is? Yeah, is the one that got the award? Can you show? Uh, Was it the one with the chimneys and the the chimneys and the uh, there's one with the chimneys and the fish and then there's the other one with the my chimneys. My is my cartoon is uh, which uh, got the award. It shows a bridge. Ah, bridge. yeah, this is the one with two women. The, the woman uh, on the bridge is yes, yes. with the baby cart and the woman below is the African woman with yes, the baby yes, yes. All right. Yes. Yeah, and just and just Good, that's great. Well, that's wonderful. And now you are preparing for your exhibition in... Uh, where about are you taking your solo exhibition? My exhibition in yeah. uh, Portugal in French. Okay, are you are you preparing to take it now? Uh, what? Well, I was wondering if you are uh, taking this solo exhibition to France now because you said I'm lying, trying to pick up some French. I'm learning Fran French. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> good, good on you. That's uh, wonderful. Uh, we we are uh, sort of missing you, you your presence here, but. Uh, we will come back to you for the prime question, all right? And we introduced you, we showed your work, and now I shall go back to Patrick. And Patrick, we heard about you. Uh, now we want to see your work. There we are. Now this is Mabube's work, and this one is your work. Okay, so the first one is the one with the orange is the new black. Oops. Uh, all right. Um, the first one, this was uh, a cartoon I did about um, the what, what was happening with uh, COVID and uh, the denialism and also some of the racism that was happening in the U.S. Um, and if you see what um, Magufuli, who recently died, he's the president of Tanzania, um, okay. did 
was really very much um, almost aping what Trump was doing in the U.S. in terms of, like, for example, denying um, what COVID, uh, 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 that COVID was there and also um, uh, in the sort of um, authoritarianism that he espoused, you know. Um, and we had a lot of talk of racism in the U.S. for wearing black. And I thought that it would be nice to invert this to think about how Africans might be wearing orange face in the sense of <laughs> trying to African leaders aping and copying um, uh, uh, the orange leader of the US. Great. Okay, so we'll go on to the next one now. Uh, hey, I thought, oh, sorry. Yeah, I thought we were in the same boat. <laughs> okay, um, that's on uh, again. This is do with the uh, vaccines um, uh, and, and what had happened, I mean, what's happening actually right now in the world is we are seeing a divide between countries that have access to vaccines and others that don't. And initially, remember at the beginning, we were all told we were together in this. This is a global fight. Um, uh, you can't defeat it only in one part of the world. But it seems that as we've gone along, um, some people are being left um, uh, uh, so to speak, on the sinking ship, um, uh, and uh, the West, in essence, is taking off on its uh, uh, a vaccine lifeboat. So um, I thought that's how I might portray that situation. Very nice perspective. I like it. Okay, so the next one is the dinosaur with a mask. Right. <laughs> yeah, um, they, I, I did this again at the very beginning of the COVID crisis uh, last year in March, um, and we had been uh, uh, obviously the it first broke in uh, in China and then went to the uh, uh, to Europe um, uh, and the US. And uh, here in Africa, where we weren't as much affected, everybody was asking, "What is the plan?" You know, we know it's going to come here, so what are we going to do? Um, and our government, GOK there represents the government of Kenya, um, simply was unable or was a very reluctant to come out and publicly say what it was planning to do. So I, I thought, and even some of the measures they took, if you see, were quite brutal and were very um, uh, reminiscent of, a, of, 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 of a, an authoritarian, if you will, a, a past. So I thought portraying them as dinosaurs with COVID sort of as the meteor that eliminated it um, uh, might be a good way to, to to get people to think about what what's going on with, 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 with that plan. Right. Okay. So we move on to the next one. American democracy. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, everybody knows um, uh, the, the Reagan and uh, um, how he, he portrayed the U.S. as the shining city on the hill, sort of the example uh, uh, for the rest of the world. Um, but as we saw during the elections, and that's when I did this cartoon, um, they have just as many problems as the rest of us. So uh, <laughs> I, I, I thought the point I was, I mean, this guy, the point I was trying to make was that it's, it's it's not that they are exceptional that um the us somehow has figured it out we are all on fire all our um uh, yeah. democracies are basically on fire and we're all trying to figure it out uh, uh, to see what works so um yeah i thought i might take a bit of a piece on the americas good one good one okay so now this i am showing because this is a cartoon by an african cartoonist and I was asking Patrick if he knew about this cartoonist called Zawawi. Now, Zawawi, uh, when I was in DPR, he uh, used to draw cartoons that were published very generously in half a page, sometimes even a full page. And do you know, I could not understand a word of the written text because it was in Arabic, but his cartoons were so expressive that um, mm -hmm. I could just enjoy them as it is. So I was just asking... Um, uh, Patrick, if he had seen his work, uh, he had not, but I thought this was a funny one with the husband and wife fighting over breakfast or something. <laughs> Next yeah, one. and I think one of the things I might I might just mention, especially about the one you've just shown, is the style yeah. is very similar to styles yeah. that we see um, uh, even here in Kenya. I mean, I know Libya is, always, oh, is far away. Uh, okay. um, if you look at the work of, for example, somebody like James Kamawira here in Kenya, it's very, very similar to this. In fact, if you publish oh. this, 
Yeah, people okay. would probably assume he's the one who drew this. Okay, okay. And here's another one. I just picked out two from his books, and his books are massive. They're like uh, at least three inches high, and they are more than an A3 size page. So yeah, uh, he gave me two of his books, which were enough for one luggage. <laughs> They're that heavy. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> this is uh, some shop seller, uh, shop uh, keeper who is selling his goods. And really, I lived in Libya for four and a half years, and I know the the candidness and the the callousness of the shopkeepers who will say, "Wallahi la, just go away. You're not in the mood of selling." And the thing is sitting right there. Uh, can I have that onion right over there? And if they're not in the book, we'd have to go back home. <laughs> okay, so now we'll come back to the screen. Uh, and, uh, we'll share the screen. Here we are, back with mm -hmm. you again. So, yeah, I did want to share his uh, work. And um, if we get a chance to uh, have this session in the next uh, uh, literature festival, I will try to have more cartoonists on board from more parts of the world, which will really enrich our, uh, you know, enrich our experience and our interaction and so on. Samir, now we're up to you. We are going to have you talk about your work. Can you show his work? We are familiar with it, but uh, for the people who are not. Uh, here we are. Okay, so here's the first one. Okay, maybe we can show this one again. Oh, by the way, this is in Nepal, and we are standing together in a group photo. And uh, this is um, the power of caricature that I wrote after returning from Nepal. And that happened in his younger days. Uh, and then there is people. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have uh, Zahoor at the back, the tall guy. And then this is a Sri Lankan cartoonist. And there's me. Um, and this, uh, Sabu, do you remember if this cartoon down here? Uh, was this the one that won a prize for um, for the for all the cartoon? Do you remember? That? No, actually, I don't remember that. <laughs> okay, now let's yeah, go but to it's the an ex Yeah. Sorry, you were saying it's an excellent cartoon? Was that what yeah, it was an excellent cartoon, yeah. <clears throat> Actually, I made this cartoon, uh, you know, during this uh, uh, Gulf War where uh, Saddam Hussein, the military dictator, was the enemy and the uh, Musharraf, you know, the Pakistani dictator, he was the friend of the U.S. So actually at that time you could not say, you know, directly about uh, what's going on in Pakistan. So that's how I try to, you know, show that uh, how, you know, the military dictators, uh, one military dictator is a friend and ally, trusted friend. Okay, right. So I go to the next one. Part martial law blocked permanently with a spider's web. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, that was. Um, I cannot see the image. <clears throat> yeah, you can't yeah. see it. I mean, yeah, no, I can it. see it. Yeah, I can see it. Okay. Yeah, it was actually, you know, the Chief Justice uh, of Pakistani Supreme Court who said that now, you know, the path to martial law is blocked permanently, uh, and uh, that's what I try to show you, you know, because that uh, comes through the barrel of the gun. And uh, it can never be, you know, blocked uh, permanently. Uh, I think that we can witness just in our recent history, it would testify that it wasn't blocked. <laughs> All right, right. Okay, shall we go? You know, this or? reminds me of a cartoon yeah. that I did that kind of very similar to this. But I had <laughs> some somebody seated inside the barrel of the of the tank and for me it was about how we are being told the military is going to keep us safe you know and so you're, you're kind of put in the barrel there but you're the ones uh, uh, who are the target yeah, sorry yeah, i just want to mention right right 
Sabir, can you move to the next one? Yeah, sure. Okay. Now, this is a very pinching one. <laughs> it's the Pakistani flag. Talk about yeah, it. it's the Pakistani flag. Uh, uh, actually, when I showed it at uh, uh, the National uh, Endowment for Democracy uh, in Washington, so, I mean, the people asked, what's the, you know, meaning? So, I told them that the, the green represents, you know, the Muslim majority of Pakistan and the white, actually, the minorities. Uh, so, you know, how uh, they were being attacked in 2011 and 12. Uh, the minorities so i mean i showed you know how the white is shrinking so actually one person uh you, the president of ned uh carl gershman he asked me a question that uh, so you showed uh minorities and muslims separately in your flag uh, i mean you know that was a really very uh question that i could not answer uh, uh, so actually, he said, so as, as an artist, what would be your, you know, uh, how would you design a new flag? Because... Okay, so we go to the next one. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 oh, Sabir! What what's this going on? Vicky Lee came. <laughs> so actually, I, uh, because, you know, when I was showing some of my work at... Uh, uh, you know, the editorial uh, cartoonist of America and Canada and San Francisco. So when I showed them my work, you know, nobody actually laughed because they were, you know, the Benazir and the Sharaf and Zaya. Nobody understood who are these people. And when I showed this work, you know, there was a laughter. And so I, I understood that, you know, uh, because, uh, it, it, you know, the taking a leak, that's a very... The Western, you know, kind of. So they could, you know, relate to it. So I understood that how, you know, the um, satire or humor is also very cultural specific. You know. So uh, they, in this, uh, I am showing, you know, the uh, Pakistani popular leaders. Uh, okay. Who, so now uh, when this WikiLeaks came, so they, they were, you know, a lot of things about them. This secret. Right. Uh, okay. Walk back to the out. screen. Of the leak uh, cartoon, right? Okay. So uh, yeah, now sure. I will, um, I guess, uh, get a chance to share. Uh, Jan, uh, of course, it's Jan's turn. And Jan, we would like to show your cartoons. And I picked out my favorite ones from the punch that you had sent. So I just first show this one. Uh, I, I love how Jan uh, shows the attitude of teenagers, which is really a difficult. Uh, so, uh, by the way, uh, you can see Mahbube. She is watching. She's watching all of us. She's watching. Uh, she's hearing us, and she's watching us. Uh, here we are, Mahbube. We're missing you, but we know that you are watching us. Okay. Right. <laughs> okay, so let me uh, show the cartoon by Jan. There we are. Uh, the, she does comic strips like me. And Jan has got this character, Val, and her kids. And so this is the one. Can you see it? Yes. Um, okay. So you see what I found here was that all the kids and everybody is having fun. And... The teenage girl sitting on the just on this little bridge is bored. So it just says everything. It, it's such a contrast to how the teenagers choose to be bored. Uh, do you want to give any comment on that, uh, Jen? <laughs> well, it seems like such a small problem compared to what my uh, fellow cartoonists on this. Uh <laughs> panel have been presenting but um my comic strip is aimed at families and to represent everyday life and yes uh if you can't have a cell phone there's no fun in the world you know even though all this yeah. is going on around you so yeah yeah so true so true but you know what uh like you i also do uh comic strips 
uh, that move on everyday life, that reflect everyday life, and they move around family because people want to see the funny side of being in a family as well. Yeah. Uh, can't have serious stuff all the time, but uh, yeah, that's what I enjoyed about your comic strips. People could relate to them. So the next one is about I am a mother. You are my children. If I do well, you'll do well, and so. And that is the meaning of International Women's Day. Yeah, so let, do give us a comment on this as well. Well, I have, uh, since I'm not a political cartoonist, um, however, I do have political things I'd like to say once in a while. So sometimes within the context of the family, I'm able to make a statement. And um, even in the, state, in the United States, we have a big issue with mothers not having enough time they have to work but we don't have any kind of public daycare um, it's difficult uh, for children not to be neglected and I think that people need to remember that if mothers are taken care of children will be taken care of and everyone will do so much better society will be so much better and uh, so I was able to draw this to reflect my opinion about that True, true, very true. Yes, and here's the other one. I love this one. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to. You don't have to read this whole one, really. I can just say that you know, this is a young a couple that they are not yet married. the The woman is divorced, and he is her boyfriend. And they've tucked the little baby boy, who is a nuisance, into bed many times. And as soon as they start to kiss, he pops back up. <laughs> and she says how does he do this and you know check his window it looks like he came in the front door so he, you know you can't have any privacy when you have children so true so true all right so now i like this one too oh my goodness uh, that cartoon okay so here they're sitting on a table with nana and the kids and the mom is saying everybody Submit your phones, devices here in this basket. I want to have a nice family dinner with no electronic devices. I love that. And so, how was school? And she says, you didn't get my text. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. I love it. <laughs> you know, Jan, I did a cartoon about uh, devices again. And this was, yeah. And this was uh, about uh, Gogi uh, meeting her friend, and she's crying, and uh, Gogi's crying because, uh, well, I'll tell you how it is. It's one of those narrative. So she says, um, let me escape from here. Uh, I just uh, narrate it because it's one of those cartoons that you can just narrate. So can you just show me the video? All right. So she's saying, Gopi's crying in the and her parents ask, what happened? So she says, my music system is gone. My computer is gone. My telephone is gone. My camera is gone. My radio is gone. My TV screen is gone. And she says, how are we gone? Was there a departure? No. The departure? No. My cell phone got lost. <laughs> because nowadays, everything is in the smartphone. So she says, no, 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 I didn't have a difficulty. It's just that my cell phone got lost. Mm -hmm. Right. So, Jan, you want to go on and tell us about, um, about uh, probably uh, a hilarious moment with regard to your work in the recent past? A hilarious moment. Oh yeah. <laughs> Can you recall any hilarious moment that, uh, that just happened to be uh, true to uh, what you want to do? Uh, well, gosh, I don't know. You caught me off guard there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you think over it. We'll go okay. to Patty and we'll stop it in the meantime. Yeah, I, and then we'll come back to you. I could say <laughs> I could say this, that in people have often asked me if I've ever done a cartoon that created an objection in my audience. And, um, and I have done many, especially because if you haven't noticed, we have a racism problem in the United States. And um, 
I have my my cartoon character Val has a man of color, uh, a mixed race man as her boyfriend, and I have gotten some very nasty uh, hate mail regarding that. But the most mail I ever got was when I made a comment about gluten free bread because <laughs> there were all these people who thought I was making fun of celiac disease. And every time I opened my email, because I hadn't, you know, I wasn't making fun of gluten-free bread. It was like the only safe thing you could eat. You couldn't eat the chicken unless it was organic and you couldn't eat the beef unless it was raised humanely. And I guess you can't go wrong with gluten, gluten-free toast. And all my email, every day I opened it up and it was <laughs> all these people objecting to the fact that I was making fun of a serious disease. So, you know. Oh. <laughs> That's a big problem in the world, apparently. Right. And how long did that take to simmer down? It, it took about a week. All right. So finally, the um, celiac support association wrote and asked me if they could use the cartoon because they really liked it i said please take oh, it wow. tell everyone to stop writing me <laughs> oh, all right <laughs> good one right uh, patrick would you like to tell us any of your experience with um, um some hilarious moment of the recent past well, I, I don't know about um, uh, hilarious moments, but I mean, I've, I've had uh, a few examples of when people have responded um, in, 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 in manners that I thought were uh, a bit curious to, to my cartoons. I was sued once because I did a cartoon of, um, there's this guy, uh, it's called Chris Kirubi, who had bought uh, a Maybach. You know, a big expensive car, and he had really promoted it, you know, um, across the country, sort of basically. Um, it's the first one in Kenya, and you know, and, also, and this is a guy with a pretty dubious past, you know. <laughs> so, um, I mean, he'd been involved, you know, um, running down parastate holes, um, uh, in, 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 in basically, sort of, everybody thinks, of many people. I think his wealth is not uh, legitimately acquired. So basically, I just drew the car itself, and uh, um, instead of having the like the number plate and the um, the identifiers, the whatever and model name and stuff, so I had the names of the scandals that he was involved in uh, over there. And he actually he wrote to the newspaper, and, you know, threatening all manner of suit, you know, uh, uh, stuff. You know, so, um, yeah, and one other one, I remember, there's a time there were two guys um, who got married in, uh, in two Kenyans, two gay Kenyans got married in, in London. And for some reason, that really caused a furore back in Kenya. You know, um, everybody making noise, and the picture, the picture of their um, uh, sort of of their wedding was plastered all over the newspapers. And, um, uh, you had guys uh, really sort of going off on them. And I did a cartoon then. Uh, we had a coalition government at the time, sort of a government of national unity led by uh, these two guys, um, Raila Odinga and Kibaki. Uh, so I drew them using that picture as the two gay, <laughs> whatever, uh, as a gay couple. And then this <laughs> is published. <laughs> you know, uh, 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 the this is used, but I, I sneaked it in uh, a, few, a few weeks later because um, I was organizing uh, an, a cartoon event and I included the, uh, the, the cartoon as part of the advertisement for that. Now, because I was paying, they couldn't say no, so I, I got to publish it anyway. Uh, <laughs> well, that's very good because, see, I, um, I think that uh, cartoons can be such a good vehicle for uh, comic relief, as it is famously known. Uh, comic relief is something we all need, and more so in these times. Because we're just locked down, we're locked in uh, in our homes, in our four walls. Um, 
Uh, Sabi, do you want to share something? Is there something you would like to tell about your experiences with a hilarious uh, moment or an impactful moment? <laughs> Actually, there are very few, you know, these uh, hilarious moments, but mostly there were scary you know, moments. Right. <laughs> so, uh, but I remember, you know, uh, 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 our minister, he was a minister of information uh, back in, I think, the 90s. So he actually asked my editor to fire me. And he said, you know, you know, I tell you that the Sheikh Saab uh, what happened, you know. And he said, you know, our prime minister is so good looking. And he makes such a, you know, horrible caricature of him. Uh, uh, so, you know, and now he, he is actually the most prominent, you know, the critic of the same prime minister. Uh, yeah. who he was, you know, yeah. Now he is. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so, no, you know, uh, there was one uh, when I, the recent our prime minister, when I made his caricature, so I made uh, some, you know, hairs on his arms. And so I got, you know, a lot of, you know, the emails and the messages, you know, the, you know, our prime minister is so handsome, you know, the, the current prime minister is called you know, the handsome. And you're showing him like, a, you know, a, a beer or a baboon, you know, and you're showing so much hair. So, you know, uh, I was just amazed, you know, that's a common practice, uh, you know, whenever you are making a male, so you make Take some hairs on the hair, uh, on the arms so that it doesn't look just two lines. You know, it just makes you know sense. And they were you know so sensitive about uh, those uh, amount of uh, hairs. Uh, so uh, that's uh, really very uh, very strange uh, attitude towards uh, satire and cartoon, which they consider as not as a as a humor, but as a direct insult. Now, I would have loved to mention all the cartoonists we have in Pakistan. <laughs> I was hoping to get their work and the photographs to share, but I, it's very nice to see that there are some women coming up uh, with uh, more editorial cartoons. I think uh, I can name a few, like Reem Kushi, then there's Fazia Minalla, then Sadia Gardezi. Um, coming to myself, uh, that cartoons that I've been doing and how I started off uh, was uh, actually I was just doing um, a pre-medical and I was uh, uh, loving to draw because I used my margins of my books to just keep doodling and drawing and and then I decided if I'm not going to be a doctor it's going to be very boring I'll just be drawing uh, you know dead bodies probably or anatomy <laughs> <laughs> or maybe just uh, bones and whatever. So I just took a U-turn and went into the fine arts department, took a test and joined the class. But I could never learn, you know, cartooning as a as a special uh, subject or as a, um, and I don't know how I, it is in other countries because we up to now do not have any uh, uh, any department or any university where they teach comic art. Uh, I have given and tried to uh, conduct uh, workshops where I could teach what I could not learn. Um, but you know, it's um, it's not the same thing because you're trying to do your own work professionally, and if you're trying to teach, then it becomes too many things at the same time. But to talk about my little uh, my journey through uh, getting my work published uh, was in the beginning easy because that's when the newspapers were the real thing. Uh, now newspapers have Hello. kind of Hello. declined because there Hello. is so much technology, so much social media and so much appearing in the social media. Uh, I made Gogi like uh, five decades ago and I was so pleased when uh, uh, Jan Elliot, when I Hello. met Jan Hello. Elliot, and Dan, hello, can hello, you tell us what you hello, gave hello, on my hello. birthday as a little hello, frame hello, picture? Hello, I think it was hello, a picture hello, of my main character, Val. Hello, hello, uh, hello. And was she having coffee with hello, Gogi hello. or having tea with yeah. Gogi? Hello, Both. And, hello, and hello, hello. the first time hello, I'm a professional hello, cartoonist 
drew gogi so they both standing there and and uh, we wrote something like uh, you know two women to reckon with something like that. and you know very and very cute little uh, picture which i had on my desk for a long time um so to talk about my journey uh, i was uh, because of my husband's diplomatic postings going from country to country to country and uh, so i would come back home and then i would be working moving one step ahead but then again moving two steps back when we'd be posted to for example to africa or to to uh, uk or to kyrgyzstan so that was kind of hard being uprooted every single time uh, after a certain time but um, it did give me the chance to interact with cartoonists there and that was very interesting for me uh, when i would come back after a certain time when i came back finally and wanted to start gogi again in the in the newspapers then it turned out that the newspapers were too happy to just uh, print uh, comic strips that were uh, reruns uh, from the from the west even popeye and um, you know the old uh, uh, as they were called the funnies you know um, so I, when i didn't get a uh, get a foothold into really getting down to co- uh, gogi comic strips then i decided to reinvent and i went into um uh, doing the public buses so i did uh, gogi cartoons on the public buses uh, which had a message uh, social or socio economical and there were like 13 buses uh, from um, uh, the capital and the twin city of rawalpindi uh, going back and forth with gogi cartoons on it it was very exciting for the children because they'd always want me to drive really fast and catch up with the gogi bus <laughs> <laughs> and i said look we have got no to an accident they said no you have to drive fast we want to have a close look at the gogi bus um it, that was fun by it lasted and then we did do some more buses in lahore and we did some uh vans in um in uh, from uh, the suburbs of islamabad and rawalpindi um and then there was uh, the chance of doing the hospitals and i said i i volunteered to do some uh, murals in the hospitals because i i noticed that people were just sitting there for hours and hours you know doom and gloom what's going to happen to me what are they going to diagnose will i live will i die so you know that kind of a situation and so i when i gave them the offer of doing some health cartoons with gogi cartoons uh, they liked the idea and so i did 23 uh murals for the children's hospital the biggest one in islamabad uh, called the pims and i did three more hospitals besides that so just to tell about my work jumping from one bandwagon to the other gogi so gogi jumped out of the pages of the newspaper on the bus on to the hospital and then i ended up doing books because i thought with books you can tell a story and when you're telling a story and if it is impactful and it's easy to read with colorful pictures then you can make an impact so when i got some testimonials back from uh, doing uh, cartoons uh, through cartoons uh, stories uh, and i got uh, some good testimonials about a girl in the village going back to school after she read my book on girls education it kind of encouraged me and even the 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 very first comic book that i drew for unicef Uh, it's called anne doctor it's about children learning about health and hygiene through a parrot who goes to uh, to the medical school comes back and teaches the kids what to do about diarrhea diphtheria malaria all those diseases and that was uh, quite a success story with unicef because they lost count of their editions they published and they did try to publish them in each and every language of pakistan uh, because it was their like their bible you know unicef always wants to push the rules the do's and the don'ts of health and hygiene so that god landed me with an award for the uh, you know the 50 women who made a difference with their work uh, and i was voted for that and then i got also uh, selected by uh, a bbc to be the 100 uh, among the 100 global women create a difference so i think it's from medium to medium that we um that we find our forte and i find that the books are having their impact and i find that the books are um 
a means of uh, engaging the children and engaging them and occupying them because when they are comic books they are easy to read otherwise kids hate to read books now <laughs> they would rather be on their ipad they'd rather be on their mobile they'd rather be on their computer but that's what i'm combating and i feel that the way to do it is to go through uh, to give them really attractive books um I, that's almost uh, uh, about my work but let me show you some of the cartoons that i have found a mixture of cartoons here uh, so this first one is about um landing in the us with the, the immigration officer asking me where i am from so where are you from and gogi says i'm from pakistan and so he says which part and she says all of me <laughs> gogi has got instead of the pictures the water pictures she's got books on her head so you can tell by the expression who is more happy okay and then there is this cartoon that i did recently the universal children's day so the little boy is selling balloons which are all smiling but he is the one who is not and then gogi has a word with him and so she's taking him to school and she's bought all his balloons and she got him a bag and everything so this was like a message that we should not let dropouts be dropouts we should send the kids to school very very important because we have a low literacy rate anyway so this was a cartoon make a statement um so the books here they are and they are seven awareness comic books on subjects skills of life right from environment to extremism to child rights to interfaith harmony to a collection of gogi's compilation of gogi cartoons and i call these books the cartoons for a cause and so i always uh, nudge corporates and you know the, the big businesses to sponsor kids who are underprivileged to receive these books as story books because each book has a message and um, and when they give out you know when they sponsor like for example 50 kids then i from my studio sponsor another 50 books uh, which makes it uh, you know i kind of match it with their uh, sponsorship order so we have sent our books recently to the deserts in balochistan and in balochistan they've got camel uh, camel mobile libraries so now the gogi books are on the camels and they go from village to village uh, lending out books to the kids who can uh, read them and then return them so these are like mobile libraries i was very excited when i heard about the mobile camel library and i said here are books from me and let the kids read these books so i'm waiting for a real uh, live video of the camel taking my books from village to village borrow yeah and this is in africa i have a friend who was very impressed with this cartoon this is when gogi was in africa and uh, so she's copying her <laughs> her african friend <laughs> <laughs> carrying the baby <laughs> so yeah <laughs> okay so this was sold as a um, fundraiser uh, among the diplomatic corps in africa we were raising funds to be for bishops uh, so this sold pretty much because it was gogi in africa and it was like gogi coming from pakistan and adapting the way of carrying a baby like that it's called a kapulana um can you bring us back to the screen so uh, people this was um, again uh, the uh, this was uh, a little bit of a uh, review of my work so with that i think we have to come and conclude uh, come to the end of our uh, uh, discourse and conclude this session i have to thank you personally um patrick Katara, uh, Jan, Elliot, Sabir, and uh, our dear friend from Iran, who couldn't make it completely, but she was listening to everything. Nabu Nepal, thank you so much for being with us. Technology 
does let us down. I know. I understand. But then you were still there. You were still there very much with us. We saw your work. And thank you all for being here for the Karachi Literature Festival on the discourse on cartooning, cartooning, no laughing matter. Thank you very much. And good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Gatara. Assalamu alaikum. And good morning or afternoon whenever the time is allotted for this session. This session is a discourse. Hi, my name is Asma Basi. Hello, I'm Manisa Shamsi. My name is Ma Hanif. You can catch us live on KLF website, YouTube and Facebook. I hope to see you there. Hello. It's fine.